Guard the sources say a file will be sent to the DPP for final determination in the murder case of Sophie Toscon de Plantier. The DPP will still review the file and decide on whether or not charges would have been pursued if uh, Mr Bailey, who died of a suspected heart attack on Sunday, if he was still alive. Joining me now to talk about all of this is Security and Crime Editor for the Irish Times, Conor Lally. Conor, good morning. Good morning, Pat. Now, this is a peculiar uh, a kind of thing that uh, cold case review was trundling on and then we had the death of Ian Bailey. Yeah, so obviously Ian Bailey died at the weekend, Pat. He has been the chief uh, suspect, really, for the Sophie Tuscan de Plantier uh, killing since uh, she was killed uh, almost 30 years ago now. Um, and really, you know, the death of the chief suspect, you would, I suppose, assume that that would, you know, more or less bring the episode to an end, really. Um, but that's not going to be the case. So what Gardy are saying is that the murder inquiry that has that has been, you know, always ongoing, that that will uh, continue on. Um, and that that's been aided by people from the cold case re- review team, uh, Gardy. They will feed their findings from that cold case review into the wider investigation. Then the wider investigation will come to a conclusion. It will send a case file to the DPP. And then even though Ian Bailey, um, who is still the chief suspect for the killing, even though he obviously has passed away, um, the Gardaí are telling me they still expect the DPP to examine that file and to determine one way or the other whether um, Bailey would have been charged with the killing. And this would be relayed back to the Gardaí and then one assumes back to uh, Sophie Tuscan, the Plantier's family. Um, So as I say, do still expect that process to happen. There's a bit of cakeism going on here, perhaps. You want your cake and mm-hmm. eat it. So the man is dead. He could never have defended himself, therefore, in any putative court case taken by the DPP. The DPP says, yes, we would have charged him. Coulda, woulda, mm-hmm. shoulda. We would have charged him, but now we can't because he's dead. Um, and so we say to the family, we would have charged him. And they'll say, <laughs> why didn't you charge him years ago? Well, that's that's it, really. I mean, um, I mean, Gardy are pointing out to me that you know, very often when people make com- complaints of historical uh, child sex abuse um, claims, that the the perpetrator can die during the Gardaí investigation or can be dead years earlier. And in some of these cases, um, inquiries will still take place. Files will be sent to the DPP, and the DPP will give an indication to the guards, which will then be passed to the complainants that, you know, the evidence was there to ground a prosecution, even even though the person is, is uh, dead. I mean, I, I think the interesting thing about the passage of time here, Pat, is that in the Irish in the Irish courts now, we are much more inclined to rely on circumstantial evidence. So if you look back... Uh, you know, 25, 30 years ago, really the evidence that you had to have to ground the prosecution had to be very clear. It had to be, you know, DNA evidence, eyewitness accounts, uh, witness statements and so on. Um, Whereas, you know, prosecutions have evolved, particularly over the last 10 years, and bits and pieces of information um, can be joined up and they can really make a very strong case, even though they're not very strong on their own. So a bit of DNA, um, a person being, you know, caught out in a lie, claiming he was at, you know, location X when he was caught out at at, uh, location Y, and then maybe some, uh, you know, telephone data. These things can be added up um, and they can be presented in a a court case and the jury can convict on that basis. Yeah. So... But but that that would be in a situation where you have a defendant who is there to offer the counter evidence... You know, well, I said I wasn't there because actually I was having an affair with Mrs. O'Brien down the road and I didn't want the wife to know, blah, blah, blah. When someone's dead, there is no possibility of any kind of defence. There is no possibility of any kind of uh, defence. And really, obviously, Ian Bailey is dead now, so he can't be charged with this crime. And in truth, we won't, you know, we will never really know um, who carried out the murder. Um, You know, I really think too much time has passed. Okay, cold cases can be solved, and even ones going back 20, 30 years can be solved. Um, But this case was so badly handled at the very start uh, when the remains were found that really precious evidence was lost. And when you lose that kind of evidence, 
um, you really don't get it back. Yeah. And when you add the loss of that evidence for the passage of time, I just can't see how they will solve this. I think really, if the DPP did come back and say, well, look, we would have charged him if he was alive, I think they will be open to more criticism, possibly, that you know, than anything else, because yeah. it will almost confirm that they could have caught him if they had played their cards right. Yeah, there, there is a, a kind of a almost conviction by media uh, going on mm. at the moment. A lot of the newspapers and broadcasters will be saying, this guy, he was violent against women, he was a narcissist, he was a fantasist, da, 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 da. Ergo, he's guilty. Absolutely. Um, and I mean, look, you know, there have been multiple inquiries carried out by the guards into this killing down the years. Uh, files have gone to the, to the DPP several times. In fact, several DPPs. Um, and each time the DPP's office has come back and said, look, the evidence just is not there. Um, and I think that's a valid point to make. I mean, everybody assumes that Ian Bailey carried out the murder. Uh, certainly guard of sources that I've spoken to you know, they very strongly suspect that it was him. Um, but strongly suspecting is not the job, yeah. really. You have to prove it. And they weren't able to prove it. Yeah. And, you know, in the eyes of the law, he is innocent. Yeah. And the the problem is that he was, from a very early stage, the only suspect. There was nobody else. You know, the, all the stories of hitmen and uh, other people who might have been involved there didn't seem to be any um, great diligent investigation into those possibilities, you know, departures from Cork Airport, or arrivals in Cork Airport, all that sort of stuff. Mm. Uh, we'll never know. Um, but when you've got your only suspect and he's now deceased, it's mm. kind of, it is a dead end. I mean, the rest of what we may conjecture is simply that conjecture. I think that's right. Um, and as you say, he is the only suspect. I mean, it is... I think it's unusual that, you know, a criminal investigation of this size would settle on one person very quickly. And that's clearly what happened. Um, you, you know, he was arrested in the very early days. And when you look back at it, I mean, I was only starting out in uh, journalism then. But when you look back at it, it certainly appears that the Gardaí settled on him as their man uh, very early on. They brought him in for questioning probably on the assumption that he'd crack. Um, and when he didn't, and when he didn't say, OK, it, you know, it was me, um, they didn't really ha seem to have anywhere else to to go. Um, and I think a great weakness probably of the inquiry was, you know, twofold. It was the way that the crime scene and the victim's uh, remains were basically uh, treated at the time. So the body was out in the open for 48 hours, if I'm recalling uh, correctly. Um, people came up to the crime scene. It became contaminated. Ian Bailey was one of those people. Um, so even if his DNA had been found there, he could say, well, look, it was there because I was there afterwards, um, you know, as a working journalist. And really, um, when the guards settled on Ian Bailey as their prime suspect and he did not crack, they'd kind of nowhere else to go. And even though they came up with, you know, people who said they saw him in various locations and picked him out and all of that, um, the DPP, as I say, just was not convinced by any of that evidence. And several DPPs just said, look, the, the evidence isn't there. You haven't proven that Ian Bailey was involved. Therefore, we're not going to charge him. All right, Conor Lally, Security and Crime Correspondent with the Irish Times. Uh, thank you very much for joining us.